Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Yes, so yeah. for for our wonderful followers, we would like to extend the previous podcast with the, the topic of dark arts of football. Enjoy. So, as we were speaking before briefly about the dark arts of football, because um, academy football is just focusing on nice football, possession football, working on technique, working on phase of play, working on um, passing sequences, blah, blah, blah. In reality, you can only do that at the top, top level, I'll be honest. Low levels, like, I'd say, League One down, you could do that, but you can't do that for a full 90 minute. if that makes sense. You can probably do that once in a game, if that, once or twice. The rest is nitty-gritty, dirty football. And that's when you start learning the dark arts of football in a senior level. Like, like I said previously, like little things pinching, like in the corner, when they when, when the defending corners, whatever, they'll be like stamping on your feet before the ball gets travelled, like swung in, and thinking, yo, like, what the hell? And then he's like, He's literally created that separation distance and he's getting a header to it and you might end up conceding a header or a little thing like where the shirt pulling um the shirt pulling and but they're putting their arm behind so the referee can't see mm. if shirt, shirt pulling, but he's shirt pulling from behind. But if you spare shirt from, from the front, you can see it. But if you shirt pulling from behind and you're facing but you're really like really next to him. You can just put shit for the first second, then let go, and then you've got that that extra distance to kind of create the leap, create the distance, so you can actually head the ball away. Or like, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen it. Like Brazilian footballers do that. I don't know why they like to get more personal and around the private parts, and they they, they just took it, seeing it happen, bro. Like they like get touchy feely, stick a finger, blah blah blah. <laughs> they like to do that stuff. I'm not into that me personally, but I've I've been a victim of it. I'll be honest, right? <laughs> Sadly, I've been a victim. Still traumatized to this day. It is what it is. You learn anyway, right? But you learn how it. You learn how to obviously don't do that. But if that's you, that's the way you swing. That's the way you swing. Do you know what I mean? But you, you, when you've experienced those things, you can see it happening before it happens to you. So you can learn how to counteract it through experience. This is why this is one of the reasons why you need to play a lot of senior football to recognise all these star cards. Even like shielding the ball when you're like putting instead of putting your full arm length, I put my instead of putting my forearm, I just turn it in a little bit. So it's going, his chest is going through my elbow. Now that's going to hit him. And then he's like, and then, then I have to spin. Then I can play, play reverse, play the one twos or whatever. Um, there's so many. And there's probably little things where, another one. I'm going to start started learning this the other day. No, not the other day, the other year, last year. I seen it. I'm thinking, yo, I'm going to take it. There's some guy, there's, there's a game I was playing centre-back and i see my other centre-back do it and I'm thinking, I've never seen anyone do this. He goes, if you have a striker that likes to pin and likes to play as a hold-up striker and he's grabbing your shit and you can't move or defend, before he grabs his shit, just literally hold his wrist and push it down. I'm thinking, can you do that? I go, yeah. Bro, by the time he's doing this, I'm grabbing his wrist. I'm cuffing like a handcuff. 
I'm grabbing this just and I'm pulling it down. And then he's lost his sense of balance because his sense of balance is leaning into a player. And then I go like this and then I take the ball. But since that day, no one has ever pinned me down. Ever. Ever. And I'm on his 12 stone. I'm not that big. I'm on a six foot. I'm not that big. For a centre back, I'm kind I'm kinda of short and small. But especially in non league. But since then, no one can pin me down ever. Little details, but again, you'll only learn from these experiences when you're training first team football and you're playing senior football. Time and time it's that attention to detail, that little details to separate you from being a good player to a great player. Um mm. So those are really important. Does the things that they will not teach you in the academy? No. Like you need to be there and, and do that. You need to experience it. You need to get pinned yourself to understand how it yeah. means how to pin. You need mm. to have your shirt grabbed to know how to grab the shirt so the referee doesn't see that. Mm. So like the, the one thing I can give for myself is uh, watch the pitch. If if you come on the pitch and you expect to play tiki taka, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll dribble everyone and I will score, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. come on the pitch and the pitch is clapped. What do you want to do? Bro, you just play long balls. You don't have yeah. chance to, to play tiki taka if the pitch is clapped. You just understand the surroundings and just, just play long balls because that's the that's the football that is most effective in this uh, yeah. condition. 100%. It's all about assessing the environment and the conditions. So, for example, if the grass is long, <laughs> you already know you can't, you have to overhit your passes because the ball is going to stop because the grass is long. Certain, the certain clubs, they, they don't cut their grasses because they play a long ball. Mm. Certain clubs do that. Stoke is a good one. They like to do that. Um, and they used to do that a lot. Um. But because the kids in the academy to have um drained grasses mm. or flat um sprinklers, a little bit wet, so you can freeze it in. Mm. Oh, try to do that in big one, but long day, bro. Like even little things I understand the condition. Like for example, if it's dead, it's just rainy, dead wet. You already know you can't overhit your passes because it's gonna slip and slide. But you already know those are the days as a striker. Oh, those are the days you hit it low and hard because it's gonna zing and it's gonna go quick as a striker. Put low and hard. Don't forget about putting the top bins. Low and hard across the goal. Or long and hard to reverse it because it's gonna slip so quick. The keeper's not gonna see it. But one thing I I read in the book of Kobe Bryant, Mamba Mentality. He he was a smart guy. He said that there are certain areas on the football pitch, on on the basketball pitch in his uh, his area. There are certain certain areas that the referees cannot see. So realize which areas on the pitch the, the referee will not see it and he use it as much as you as you as you should mm. i don't know who i've seen um who i seen i don't know what interview it was but he said sometimes i use the referee as a shield mm. to get in between and i'm thinking this guy's levels I don't know which play it was and what interview it was. Sometimes I, I, the players can't see me and then I come out. Yeah, that's crazy. Kante said the same thing. He goes, how can you sense danger, blah, blah, blah. And, and some players say, sometimes you don't know where Angola Kante is, but you just know as soon as you get the ball, he's, he's literally behind you or he's, mm. he's literally going back at you within a second. But with the guy hides and then he comes, the guy hides. He's not, behind you all the time even when you don't have the ball do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so again just recognising timing decisions blah 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 all of these things you're not going to learn at a high speed of playing intensity at men's football unless you play men's football Um, but yeah that's, that's my advice even like things for example um, tackles but how many times have you tackled someone and then they get a lucky bounce and then the ball goes forward? Oh. I don't know how much that annoys me, but I'm like, you lucky, lucky. And I'm on the floor and they're like, 
and the momentum's like going and I'm like yeah. someone who told me take the ball and take the man mm. take the ball and take the man and for the two was take the ball stop doing this hook slide hook tackle and then he's like get the ball and get the man I don't know I'd right, say less so I used to go in with one foot tackle and then the other foot bang I used to hit him all the time works wonders and you're going to scare your opponent how many times have you heard um managers saying let them know you're there from minute one let them know who they're dealing with from minute one just mess them up psychologically just let them know it's, that, it's just getting that edge from the start of the game another one bro the strikers I hate it when I do this or wingers do you know when I'm communicating mm. I'm screaming my centre back I scream it right in his ear yeah. <laughs> you okay I'm like no, I'm not talking to you. Hi. And then he's turning and scanning and I'm screaming on his ear. Let's show the highlight. Bro, his ear is ringing. Mm. Ringing. Bro, he's like, calm down just to give him that. Do that all the time. Mm. Well, bro, this. Like from striker's perspective, I can tell that this is the worst kind of defenders to play against. Like what you want as a striker is to have somebody cute that is, it will just take one touch, distribute to the side. Yeah. And when it comes to tacklings, he will give you some space. He will prioritize mm-hmm. the back room. But this mm-hmm. is who you want as a right? You don't want a guy that is screaming in your ear, that is taking you down together with the ball. Yeah. So, uh, Even little things before you get a header. That sure. Hmm. Or just step on his heel. And then drop and then bang. He's going, ah! But he's gonna go like this, and then you can get the header over his head, mm. or even like uh, little things, bro. Like shit pulling. Oh, I like a good pinch. Oh, I pinch him all the time. I like I love a pinch, bro. Like, oh, what was that? I'm thinking, <laughs> bro. I love it, bro. Oh, I love a pinch, bro. I pinch him. Mm. Like, what are you doing? Bro, this one time I did a pinch, yeah. Just a strike, I go like, like that. Ah, ah. Gets a red card though. You know what I do? Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. 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 I'm like, oh, 10 man. Oh, that game won 5 0, bro. I'm happy. Mm. Or like little things where that has a striker. That has your nose, like you said, your nose coming 5 milliseconds before. Stick your foot in, get your body in, but then as soon as you hit you, you can jump off the floor, so so your foot's not stuck on the ground, so he breaks your leg. Mm. Maybe do that in the box, or just on the edge of the box. You want a free kick and you want a penalty. Again, are you willing to put yourself into that situation for the team to get free points? Mm. Or you just ball with about nice football? Tiki Taka, lovely job, la 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 la, la la la. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. picnic for bro. bro. Picnic. So, yeah, but bro, like, let let me give some tips to the strikers then. So uh, there was again in a in a Kobe Bryant book. Like I think everyone should read it. The Mamba mentality. He said that when the defenders were like pinching him, like as you said, doing the shoulders. Bro, he was turning to them and say, saying to them, I love it. I love it. Continue. <laughs> Give me more. I love it. And bro, that's how you can get to the defender's head. So he'll be like, oh, it doesn't work on him. Okay. Yeah. Because from the defender's side of you, he's waiting mm-hmm. for you to lose his uh, lose your your uh, attitude and uh, do like, as you said, pow, pow, red card. Yeah. La, 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 yeah. la. So uh, just, just tell to to defender, I love it. I need yeah. more. I did the opposite. So every time I stamp on the feet, pinch, shape up, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean that. Sorry, 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 sorry. They would get up. 
my bad. Am having a bad day. My bad. Oh, sorry, sir, sir. And then he's like, Bleh. and I'm like, I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I said, I'm sorry. Sorry, sir. And then the next side there. Because he's not expecting it. Mm. He said, sorry. But he's not expecting it. And he's like, he's bewildered, but, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it. I... Next tackle, studs up, bang, hit him. I'm like, wow, oh, that left is crazy, man. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. My bad, man. <laughs> it works every time, bro. One thing an attacker can do to not get pushed around, you're either quick, you're either strong. You cannot go around it. You need to mm. pick your pure area. You're either quick or strong. 100%. Even like little things, really. Like, how many times have you seen players say, use the defender as a way, as a reference point of how he's going to shoot. So, if you know defender is standing right in front of the keeper, use him as shield to, like, to mm. curve the ball to, like, the, the bottom corner or top corner. The keeper not going to see it till late. Mm. Or, you know the defender is going to lunge in. Okay, reverse it between the legs or slide a, a, a pass through the, between the legs, just shift it and then reverse it. Like little things like that, like again, you're not gonna pick up these details unless you play senior football. And it's these things, it's not something you think, it's instinctive. Because you've done it again and again and again, because you don't have time to think on football, especially in this immense football where speed of play and intensity is a lot quicker. You don't have time to think. It has to be instinctive. Mm. But again, through repetition, through learning, experience, then it's going to become extinctive. But again, you need to be playing men's football to learn these things. I think we covered two topics uh, about decisions uh, that affected our careers and the dark side of football. I think people should be happy. Got mm. some uh, valuable knowledge. 100%. But I would say to kids as well, don't do the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. Change it up. Try new things. Experience new things. Once you've given it enough time, move on. Try new things. Adapt. Adapt, adapt, adapt as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, and I would say for myself, uh, don't look too much into Guardiola's, into Tiki Taka. Because uh, the reality of uh, professional football is, is brutal. It's tough. It's like uh, like uh, it was in uh, Tim Grover's book, uh, Winning. And uh, he got uh, he asked some uh, players about how they describe winning. And uh, some of them said, it's nasty. It's uh, fighting. It's uh, working to your last, uh, last breed. So like many people think that this is winning is just cute. It's like, yeah, I won. Yeah, nice. No, bro, you need to leave your heart to win. 100%. What I would say is like, football is a business. It's a dog fight. So th think about what's necessary to get three points. That is it. What, what value can you bring to get them closer to bring that three points? That's the only thing that you need to work on. Mm. That's it. Yeah, that's how we provide the value to the team. If you make yeah. sure you will give the manager three points, everyone's going to love you. Yeah, that's the only thing that matters. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.